In this video, we define the internal energy and uh, we use it to write the first law. All right, so in the last couple of videos, we have stated that there's only two types of energy transfer, either as work or as heat. In those videos, we have seen examples of how to calculate work and heat for specific processes. As a matter of fact, the only thing that we know how to do right now would be to calculate work in uh, gas expansion, and that is that expression. And then for heat, we have seen how to calculate heat when the only process that is taking place is the heating or the cooling of an, of an object. And in that case, we have uh, that expression. Now, these expressions uh, can be reformulated depending on whether the expansion will be reversible or against a constant external pressure, or whether your heat capacities are per mole or specific and so forth. Now, so let's try to see how uh, that definition of work and heat uh, takes us to the first law. Now, uh, we know how to uh, compute some examples for energy transfers, right? But we, what we don't have yet is a way to do the bookkeeping of energy, right? So we know how energy transfers in and out of systems, but we don't have a metric to determine what the total energy of an object or a system is. Right, so that is actually what the internal energy is. That's what we call U. That's the definition of internal energy. And U is, is just, again, a, a thermodynamic variable that allows you, allows you to do the bookkeeping of energy in, in, a, a, in an object. So when you consider a human being, like me, for example, right, the internal energy, U, would be the sum of all of the kinetic and potential energy of all of the particles composing my body, right? So obviously that would be an exceedingly diff difficult uh, property to calculate because there's so many uh, particles inside my body which are moving, which are interacting with each other, and that notion leads right, gives rise to some kinetic energy, and then those interactions will give rise to some potential energy. And again, the calculation of all those would be exceedingly difficult to do, okay? But that would be uh, what the internal energy of a system is. Now, this is the beauty of thermodynamics. We're actually not interested in the total energy of a system, like a chemical reaction or a cell or a human. We're only interested in changes to that internal energy, right? So what we're really after is this. Suppose that you have a chemical reaction, right? Uh, uh, how much energy can you release out of that chemical reaction? Or suppose that that energy reaction needs some energy in order to proceed. How much energy you need to supply for that uh, uh, chemical reaction, okay, in order to take place? That's what, that's kind of the, the type of question that we're uh, doing here. Okay, so since the uh, internal energy is a measure of the total energy of, uh, of an object, and we know that energy can only be transferred as either heat or work, then the first law naturally arises. Notice that changes to the internal energy are going to be the sum of the, S, uh, the energy transfer as work and the energy transfer as heat. That is the first law, and that is how simple this is. And again, this considers the fact that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. And then the only two types of energy transfer as heat and, are heat and work. So there you go, that is your first law. And importantly, we have defined here a way to uh, determine or to do the bookkeeping of the energy of an object and that's something that is going to be uh, quite important uh, going forward. Right, in the next uh, video we're going to see an example for how the first law applies to something quite simple that we know how to do with that formulation for work and heat which is going to be an isothermal gas expansion.